Let us stand together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. The Lamb of God will be our shepherd. He will guide us to the water of life. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us share in the litany for Good Shepherd Sunday. O Christ, after your resurrection, you appeared to your disciples, you breathed on them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit. You gave joy and exaltation to the whole creation. Through your victory we pray to you. Hear us, Lord of glory. O Christ, after your resurrection, you sent out your disciples to teach all nations and to baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You promised to be with them and us until the end of the world. Through your victory, we pray to you. Hear us, Lord of glory. O Christ, through your resurrection, you lifted us up and filled us with rejoicing. Through your salvation, you enrich us with your gifts. Renew our lives and fill our hearts with joy. Through your victory, we pray to you. Hear us, Lord of glory. O Christ, you are the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. To rich pastures you lead us. In dark valleys you are with us. You anoint us with oil and call us by name to your banquet. On the glorious day of your rising, we pray to you. Hear us, Lord of glory. Save us, O Christ our Lord, in your goodness. Extend your mercy to all your people awaiting the resurrection and have mercy on us. Hear us, Lord of glory. O merciful God, shepherd of all, guide and keep us in your path of righteousness. Comfort us with your rod and staff of compassion. Anoint us with the oil of courage, that we may rightly offer our lives in love for you and all the desperate and needy. This we pray through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us pray. Living God, with joy we celebrate the presence of your risen word. Enliven our hearts by your Holy Spirit, 
so that we may proclaim the good news of eternal and abundant life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church, a reading from Acts. Now in Joppa there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, who heard that Peter was there, sent two men to him with the request, Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them, and when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. Holy Wisdom, Holy Word. Thanks be to God.
Hear a reading from Revelation. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne sing and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one who knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away the tears from their eyes. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God.
Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, the festival of the de dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. For many, many months, these walking wet youth and their sponsors have explored what it means to follow Jesus. By this I mean not just any Jesus. There are a lot of them, a lot of Jesuses. That's because it has always been a human tendency to remake Jesus any way we want. A Jesus who looks like us, thinks like us, has the same skin color, the same ideas. Some people look for a Jesus, and if they can't find one, they make one up. A Jesus who loves us more than he loves particular kinds of people we don't want living near us. I think it's necessary to call out a fake Jesus when we see one. But we will always, we must always have enough humility to remember that we ourselves are not immune to shaping Jesus to fit our comfort zones like a lump of Play-Doh. The good news is that WPPC doesn't use Play-Doh. Now, we're not perfect. But we work hard, I think, so that no comfort zone Jesus is being followed here. How do I know? Well, we have a spiritual TSA. Got a few smiles. A security check that makes it much harder for an imposter Jesus to sneak in and substitute for the real one. The TSA security check I'm thinking about is the gospel. All of it. All four of them. Which the discipline of the three-year lectionary cycle gives us. The benefit of having four Gospels rather than just one is that Jesus can't be pinned to anyone's single point of view. No one, not even Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John can ever say, I've got this Jesus figured out. There's always more to Jesus than we think we know and have yet discovered. As our spiritual TSA security check four Gospels together help us recognize a multidimensional Jesus, not only alive in the Bible, but alive in the everyday of our world. Look at all the ways of looking at Jesus we have in just John's Gospel. Jesus is the Good Shepherd, but John also presents Jesus as the bread of life, the light of the world, the resurrection and the life the true vine, and the living water who quenches our 
What this means is that you and I, from the youngest, I think it's got to be you, Marin, to the oldest, and we'll gloss that over, are always, catch this now, we are always, whatever our age, coming to know Jesus. And as this happens, we come to know who Jesus calls us to be in him. Discerning who we are called to be is the hard work of every disciple, and it requires listening. We must listen for the shepherd's voice, to the shepherd's voice. In the process of such listening, I found, we will always be amazed how often we discover that what we thought we knew about Jesus was actually something about us that we projected onto Jesus. A sure sign that we are spiritually maturing is when we accept that Jesus is not like we assumed, which usually is something with which we are quite comfortable, but rather he's more like the stranger from whom we want to keep our distance. Such discoveries like this frequently happen to those who listen. When they do, they are moments of grace saving us from making Jesus in our own image. That kind of Jesus can't save anyone. Listening is the first sign of belonging to the shepherd. What we read today of being one of the shepherd's sheep. This Sunday puts before us once again the truth of Jesus as the good shepherd who gives his life for the sheep. And that gift has another name. It is called resurrection life. Now, resurrection is not a thing. It's actually a particular kind of doing. Resurrection's not an object, but a verb. It is not something done to us but something we live out. It's God's power working newness, working forgiveness, reconciliation, justice, healing, working transformation. In today's scriptures, we get a picture of what resurrection looks like. It's active, dynamic, and thoroughly participatory. What our readings show us today is that resurrection blossoms in our lives through praising, praying, listening, trusting, and following. Look at Revelation, where we glimpse a great gathering. People of every tribe and nation, God's rainbow of humanity, are assembled around God's throne, all standing in their baptismal robes. Together with the heavenly beings, they're in the middle of a grand liturgy. What is most distinctive about this gathering is this. All are welcome because all belong. In the center is the Lamb, the one through whom salvation is offered as gift. The vocabulary and revelation is certainly inspired, if not directly borrowed from Psalm 23. Jesus is both the Lamb and the Shepherd who guides the thirsty to the spring of the water of life. Did you notice what happens beside the life-giving waters? God wipes tears away. A disciple's life will have times of tears. Some tears we shed for ourselves. Other times we shed them in empathy for others who are suffering. What God promises is that God will be with us in our pain, drying our tears. The drying of tears is a sign of God's kingdom, the new creation, which arrived in Jesus' birth, life, death, and resurrection. As the community of the baptized, we are called to be God's community of tear wipers coming alongside the risen Christ everywhere 
in the world where people are suffering. Let's look at Acts. Here we have a story that became legendary among Luke's readers, where a pillar of the church is stricken with a deadly illness, unleashing a flood of tears. The double use of her name, the Arabic Tabitha and the Greek Dorcas, indicates just how important she was in the church. Notice how Luke describes the miracle. Peter prays, then commands. What Peter says is both gift and call. Tabitha, get up. Lucy, Kinsley, Sophia, Charlie, Eric, in this service today, we will call you by name. Very soon, you will get up from kneeling, having been anointed with oil, after we have asked God to empower you with the Holy Spirit. Let's turn to the gospel. Those who belong to Jesus are known as the listeners. Jesus says their hearing is tuned to the shepherd's voice. Now, I'm told by experts, as if I didn't know myself, that listening is getting harder, and harder, and harder. Am I right? Am I right? Especially the deep listening that we might call paying attention. There are so many voices competing for our attention. Some of us hounding us to buy more goods and services. Some are speaking fearfulness. Others hopefulness. Some voices are angry. Some hateful. So many voices. Which ones shall we listen to? Listening to the shepherd is best something we do together. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed how your hearing the shepherd's voice improves when we listen together? In case I miss something, I've got you to help me. We help each other to listen. That's why we sheep do best listening in community. Do you know what a group of sheep is called? A small group of sheep is called a flock. Yeah. A larger group of sheep is called a think mafia. It's not called a mob. It's called a mob. Did you know that? A large group of sheep is called, I looked it up, but Wikipedia's got to be right. A large group of sheep is called a mob. Or, another word, is a band. Sometimes a large group is called a herd, drawn from the name shepherd who herds the sheep. So West Plano is such a flock mob band. We are a band of the baptized. West Plano is a community of listeners who belong to the shepherd who know his voice. Now, belonging is not an achievement as if it's something we could earn or deserve. You know, let me tell you something. If you didn't know it already, sheep never have to try out to be part of the flock. They belong by virtue of who and what they are. So also with us. We are gifted with belonging. Belonging never changes throughout our lives. Did you catch what Jesus said to those he's speaking to this morning? He says, no one can snatch them out of my hand. What can change, however, is our sense of that belonging. Do you know what helps most 
our sense of belonging to stay strong. It's being a keen listener, especially in the midst of storms and the struggles of life. St. Benedict says to his community that we should cultivate an ear in the heart. An ear in the heart. So, kinsmen, Lucy, Sophia, Eric, and Charles, I charge you as I charge all of West Plano, listen to the shepherd with the ear in your heart, calling you by name, leading you on whatever path he guides. Though that path sometimes means ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, know that the shepherd is leading us and his love supporting us. Thanks be to God. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Drew. That guy, peace be with you. Peace be with you. As we come to this table, it ought to be pointed out and we need one because we need one wait um, no, yeah, uh, Linda would you come and well, are you going to yeah all right. Uh, it ought to be mentioned that uh, what our youth did by way of giving witness to their faith, which is part of the process of their coming to um, 
be received into membership. You know, in the past years, they've sometimes written a statement of faith, sometimes done a faith journey. What this group of youth did, and I will say this is the first time in my 44 years of ministry that all who have joined in this group were ones I baptized. So that has some special meaning, as you can imagine. Well, this group, uh, because they have been communed since birth in Christ and part of the life of this church in its worship, at, which is the very heart of who we are, they together, as part of their group exercise, wrote, with my guidance, a Eucharistic prayer. And that prayer will be is being prayed at the table this day and uh, you will find copies of it that you can look at in the area where we will welcome them uh, more informally as new members following worship. So I share that with you. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are all who find refuge in God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, generous creator and lover of humankind, we praise you for bringing the world into being, for fertile soil, nourished with the waters of life, providing a home for all creatures. When evil put your handiwork under the shadow of death, you cleanse the earth with the waters of the flood, renewing it, as a blessing for all to share. When oppression threatened the life of Israel, you parted a path through the waters of the sea, delivering a suffering people from bondage to freedom, rejoicing in your saving goodness throughout history. We join our voices with the choirs of angels and the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Redeemer, in the fullness of time you sent Jesus, born of Mary, in human flesh. Baptized by John, he answered your call, giving his life to all in need. Your love is never failing. Praise to you for quenching our thirst. Beside the lake, Jesus invited ordinary folk to join him in your mission. When storms threatened chaos, he said, Peace be still. To those whose hearts thundered with fear, he said, Come to me, and I will give you rest. Your love is never failing. Praise, Praise to you, you for, for quenching our thirst. thirst. Jesus welcomed all at his generous table, eating and drinking his forgiveness and love, a sign that every life matters, red and yellow, black, brown, white. He is our good shepherd, who calls us by name and leads us to green pastures and still waters. Your love is never failing. Praise to you for quenching our thirst. We give you thanks that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus gathered with those who loved him. He took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With thanksgiving, we take this bread and this cup and proclaim the death and resurrection of our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ, Christ will come again. Send us your Holy Spirit, O God. Make this meal a communion with the risen Christ, the bread of his justice, the wine of his mercy, that we may be one with him and one with all the baptized in every time and place. Your love is never failing. 
Praise to you for quenching our thirst. Strengthen us as a servant community, proclaiming your good news of jubilee, so that this suffering world will be made whole and all humanity reconciled as one. You show us a vision of the tree of life with fruits for all and leaves that heal the nations. Grant to us such life, empowering us as faithful disciples until your eternal purpose comes to fulfillment and we feast at your table in glory. We praise you, eternal God, through Christ your word made flesh in the holy and life-giving spirit now and forever. And now with the confidence of the children of God, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Because there is one loaf, we many as we are, are one body, for it is one loaf of which we all partake.
when we break the bread, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? When we give thanks over the cup, is it not a sharing in the blood of Christ? Holy things for holy people. One is holy, one is Lord, Jesus Christ, to the glory of God. The gifts of God for the people of God.
graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. announcements. The session has called a congregational meeting for Sunday, May 29, to fulfill the Book of Order requirement that the congregation dissolve its pastoral relationship with its pastor prior to his retirement. This meeting will take place immediately upon the close of the morning worship service. Next Saturday, Grace Presbytery is meeting and uh, will approve my retirement, and I've also been asked to say a few words. So it will be a few words. <laughs> On May 15th, you'll see that the bachelors are inviting you to be recipients of a party we're throwing for the church to say thank you. That starts at 3 o'clock if you're around, and you can come. Uh, we've hired the Julius Quartet, uh, and they are going to perform for us. Uh, the first bottle of champagne will be popped at about 3.01. <laughs> Following this service, a reception for our newest members. Yay! We have a few presentations. We hope you'll come back. And uh, also, we've got photos uh, from, their early, from their spiritual birth. And you can see some of them in the fellowship hall. And then the rest of the month is laid out for us. You can see, please be sure to read the announcements. Sisters and brothers, this is our baptismal calling. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one. Strengthen the Support the Help the Honor Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Thanks be to God. Sisters and brothers, Holy Eternal Majesty, Holy Incarnate Word, Holy Abiding Spirit, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Song of Simeon. Yes. I apologize, somehow I missed that and thought I did this overlook. And now I'm Lord, bid your servant go in peace, your word is now fulfilled, his eyes have seen salvation's gone, his child so long foretold, this is the Savior of the world, the Gentiles from Christ 